as James Bathden for exam three for sports nutrition. Uh, for question one, how would you explain to a friend or a client that is convinced that carbohydrates cause weight gain and they should be a great way to do this when dieting? Um, I think it's important when you're looking into carbohydrates, you see that they play an important role in energy levels throughout the body, especially in athletes, as typically it's one of their primary sources, uh, depending on the sport you do, for energy. Um, when, you break, when breaking down diets, what, and what works and what do doesn't work can be very difficult because you have to look at what weight is being lost, whether it's fat mass, fat-free mass, stuff like that, and if it is highly sustainable. Um, when you get low on carbs, your body gets into a state, which can typically be referred to as ketosis, um, which can help with, gait, with weight loss. However, it has some side effects that make it very difficult to stay in long term, such as headaches, fatigue, and weakness due to lack, lack of energy. Um, when people go about blaming carbs for them, for them increasing their weight, it typically isn't the carbs that are causing it. Um, it can be a variety of things, such as you're eating too much, or you're not really getting any physical activity. Um, or there are many different types of carbs, such as uh, complex carbs, which are really good for you and have good energy. They can provide uh, better long-sustaining energy levels. Or you can get into like uh, processed carbs, which um, give very little long-term benefit, and they can get burned through your system pretty quickly. Uh, for question two. Summarize what the research has shown with regards to various diet archetypes um, that we discussed in class, such as low fat, very low fat, low carb, keto, high protein, intermittent, and intermittent fasting, and how they affect body composition. So, in the world of dieting, I think everything has been <laughs> tried for the most part. I mean, there's a couple of things, but for the most part, I think any people would do about anything to change their body composition. Hence, why we have so many different genres of dieting. Um, for low fat and the very low fat, um, these di these diets contain. Uh, they get they recommend you be in a caloric deficit as most diets do, um, and it can be paired along resistance training to help prevent the loss of fat-free mass, which is um, pretty much muscle and stuff like that. Um, so for the the low fat, it is said to be about thirty five percent or less fat for for the low fat, and then for very low fats, around 10 to 20% fat consumed in their diet each day. This diet tends to lead to a decrease in fat mass and fat-free mass, so they recommend you try to increase your protein intake to help counter the loss of this fat-free mass along with your resistance training. Uh, for low carb, there's been uh, very little consistency in explaining what a low carb diet is. Has been in ranges from 45 to 65 percent, all the way down to like 50 to 150 grams a day. Uh, now, even though it does uh, have some de decreased energy levels, as carbs are typically your biggest energy consumers, um, it is still highly recommended you use resistance workouts uh, to help limit the amount of fat-free mass you lose while on this diet. Uh, we have seen this diet to be helpful in losing weight short term, but can be challenging to maintain. Um, for a long term, especially when you get into the low, the lower body fat percentages, because you have less fat to be turned into energy. So therefore, you're trying to pull more glucose, but then you start pulling fat-free mass. Uh, so it makes it really difficult to maintain long term. Uh, that kind of works really nice into ketone. Keto, which is uh, pretty much a low to no carb diet, um, which it's recommended to be less than 10% of your daily in intake. Um, when you get to this, when you get to a state that called ketosis, um, it can be beneficial in help burning an extra fat, um, but it makes it, as I stated a little earlier, you can have some fatigue, like some fatiguing issues, possibly headaches, and um, just lower energy levels. Um, as with most diets, you want to um, have resistance training alongside of this. As you know, it helps you not help you prevent breaking down uh, proteins and uh, muscle and all that fat-free mass in your body, and more focusing on <coughs> the fat mass. Um, the main problem is it can be very diff difficult to stay in long term, as stated a little earlier, just because uh, when you get to low carbs, you have very little energy. It can also be incredibly difficult to fully cut out carbs as. In today's society, they are everywhere. 
um, most diets consume carbs in some sort, whether they be processed or they be complex. Um, there's diet, there's carbs everywhere. Um, and we get into the high protein diet. A uh, high protein diet is said to be around 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram per body mass. <coughs> Uh, have been seen to be slightly beneficial to help improve body composition while decreasing weight and increasing fat-free mass. The main drawback of this is the pricing. It can be very expensive um, with you know meat prices and um, being your main in intake of this protein. It can be very expensive and if you want to go to the protein, protein shakes and routes like that, uh, that is also very, can be pretty expensive. Um, uh, you may have to eat more meals throughout the day, so it's going to be a little more time consuming just to be able to fully digest uh, all the protein intake you are getting because your body can only pro uh, ingest protein so much at one time before it just starts falling behind and just in, um, using the rest of the protein as waste pretty much if it's not able to get digested in the, a lot of time period. Um, but yeah, there seem to be some pretty good benefits to body composition with the high protein. It's just probably one of the more expensive, more difficult ones to stick to, uh, pricing-wise and time-wise. Uh, intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is based around limiting what times you can eat, uh, whether it be you can only eat for from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. or something like that, and but all the rest of the day you're not eating. Um, you have to, your goal is to eat pretty much as like up to your caloric uh, intake. Um, still being in a slight caloric deficit, obviously, but your goal is to diet. And some diets, some of these intermittent fasting don't really limit what you can eat. But if you pair it alongside other diets, then you don't have those foods to kind of eat in that time period. Um, you do see uh, a loss in weight. Um, but you do, you can also see a big struggle with um, energy levels, such like that, throughout the day up until the time you eat. So you may be, um, if you don't eat all morning, you may not, you may start up in the morning low on energy and not really regain energy until you're a lot of time to eat later that night. Um, it can be very difficult to kind of, you know, go against the hunger uh, you may be facing throughout those times and that's gonna be one of the main reasons people fail this workout this uh, diet <coughs> um, but otherwise there can be seen benefits um, I still recommend you use resistance training throughout your workout to help you know prevent the loss of that fat free mass For number three, what are some important considerations or factors that would pro promote a favorable body composition? One that is low fat, lower in fat mass, and higher in lean muscle tissue. I think some of the most important things to consider is um, including resistance training in your schedule at least a couple days a week, minimum th three days a week probably. Um, this just helps you improve your fat free mass, um, you get stronger, you your uh, muscles tend to get a little bigger just to help uh, improve that strength which then in return um, helps improve your body composition um, you also see a lot of uh, fat mass kind of being utilized to burn use as energy uh, when you go alongside of this for the diet uh, I'd recommend going kind of a higher protein diet um, as scientifically has been seen to have the best impact on body composition. Um, I wouldn't really focus too heavily on cutting out carbs or fats, but just kind of uh, cutting back a little bit and more focusing on what kinds you eat. So for carbs, I'd recommend like good uh, complex carbs, while for fats, I'd recommend more of like a poly or mono monounsaturated fat. Um, still, this diet can help you uh, increase your fat free mass while decreasing your fat mass if you're in a slight caloric deficit. So roughly about 500 calories less per day, depending on what your maintenance calories are. Uh, number four, explain the difference between eating disorder and disordered eating, outlining potential warning signs. Uh, 
Um, eating disorders consist of forms such as anorexia nervosa, which is intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat. This can get to extremes of simply not eating or completely under eating throughout the day. Um, just mainly heavily focused on body image and uh, stuff along those lines can be big, big warning signs. Uh, another form of eating disorder is bulimia nervosa, which is performing a binging session of a minimum of two times <coughs> a week. This can be a form of purging of the body, whether it be vomiting or like taking laxative or even extreme exercise in order to help limit the weight gain um, from each of those meals. Um, a lot of big signs of this is you can see this a lot of this coming from um, lean sports where like your weight can affect your performance and stuff like that um, so yeah it's just a lot of like struggling with you know, being avoiding putting on weight as much as possible can be the biggest downside of those uh, disordered eating tends to be a uh, main um, main like what is it, warning sign to getting into is, uh, eating disorders so disordered eating is a wide spectrum that goes from all the way from overeating all the way to under eating and being obsessive for body shape and body weight. Uh, this can lead to eating disorders and it can have serious effects on your general health, um, similar to the eating disorders above. If you're um, like focusing strictly on like if I eat this I want to get fat, then you may uh, you're adding extra stress to your body and you're not giving your body the energy it needs. So therefore has uh, big health effects yeah and a lot of like um, sports can play a role into this or um, just a lot of compare like if you're comparing yourself to others that can lead that can kind of be big warning signs to that you may start to be overthinking your um, eating habits um, and then question five, explain why losing or gaining weight is not a sign, is not as simple as calories in or calories out. Losing gain weight can be affected by many things, such as activity level and quality of food. If you're trying to focus on losing weight but not exercising as much, you're exercising, your body may just be breaking down fat-free mass instead of fat mass. Um, this can help you lose weight, but not help improve body composition. For the quality of food you're eating, strictly, pr if you the quality of food of if you're e eating strictly processed foods that may have little no nutrients may be useful and may not allow your body the proper energy therefore it stores um, what it, whatever energy it has to try to save it for times it's really needed so it'll store it as fats um, until later dates um, if you're yeah and so it's calories in and calories out can be a very big um, factor but if you're not pairing it alongside the right things, such as proper um, physical activity and more focusing on the quality of the food you're eating, um, you may not see as big of benefits as you may hope to see.